Requesting external files for cases. If you need to get recorded video or other files from someone who does not have access to the service, you can create a file request for a specific case. This will allow anyone with the web page link to add files directly to the case without giving them access to the case information or any other part of the service. To add a file request, first open the case that you'll be adding the files to. On the right side, you have the permission list. Depending on the size of your window, you'll either see a tab for the file request next to it, or a down arrow next to permissions. If you see the arrow, click on the tab and choose File Requests. If the case already has some active file requests, you'll see them in the list. A case can have multiple active file requests in case you want to have different request parameters for different groups of people. For example, if a police officer lets me know they have some video for the case, I can set up a file request that asks for the officer's name and has no expiration date. I could have another file request active for anyone in the general population who has video or other files related to the case, but for this request I could allow anonymous uploads and set the request expiration date to one week from now. To create a new file request for this case, click on the plus icon on the right side. This will bring up a window asking us for the relevant information and configuration for this request. Anything marked with an asterisk is a required field and must be filled in. The first field is for the name of the request and will take the case name by default. Below that is a field for a brief description of the request. Anyone who opens the link will see this description, so if you have any specific instructions or specifications, this would be the place to put them. You can set an expiration date for the request, or use the checkbox to have it never expire. The file request web page will always have a section for the uploader's contact information, but this will be optional if you put a check in the Allow Anonymous Uploads box. To give the uploader a better idea of the files you need, you can set a reference location, a start date and time, and an end date and time for the case or incident. These sections will take the case details by default, but they can be set to other values. Click the Create Request button when you have everything configured the way you need. A new window will pop up where you can copy the file request link, open the link in a new browser tab, or modify the request. Click Done when you're finished, and you'll see the new file request in the list. From the list, you can see the URL, the expiration date, and you have buttons to copy the link, edit the file request, or delete the file request. Typically, what you would do from here is copy the link and paste it into an email to send to anyone who may have files you need for this case. Clicking on the URL from the list will open a new tab in your browser and show you what they will see. If you configured your account information in the Configuration section of the service, you'll see your logo and contact information on the top of the page. Your account name is shown next, asking the person to share files for an incident, and the expiration date for the file request is also displayed. Below that you have the name of the request, the location that was selected as both text and a map, and the date and time for the start and end of the incident if that was configured. Under the map is the message or description that was entered on the second line of the file request configuration. The next section is for the contact information for the person who is uploading the files to the case. If you put a check in the anonymous field, they will be notified that this is optional. If the contact information is required, they will need to enter at least their first name, last name, and email address before being able to click on the Share Files button at the bottom of the page. In the Account Information Configuration section, you can also add the terms and conditions for any file requests. The person sending you files will need to check a box to accept the terms before proceeding. Clicking on the Share Files button will bring up a new page with the request information, but with the map hidden and the Contact Information box will be replaced by a file sharing section. In case the files the person wants to share are on a mobile device, they can show a QR code, 
scan it with their phone camera, and bring up the same web page on their mobile browser. To share files, they can drag and drop them in the file sharing section, or they can click anywhere in this section to open a browser to select files. This may trigger a recapture window to pop up to verify that this person is indeed a human. Once files have been selected or dropped in that area, they will see the upload progress. Once the file upload has completed, they will see a message letting them know that the file has been shared successfully. They can enter any comments for that particular file as well, and will need to click on the Save button to keep the comments associated with that file. When all the files have finished uploading, the browser window can be closed. Looking back at the case, you'll now see the new files there. Anything typed in the comments will be seen in the file description. You can also see that this was a public upload in the file details, and the contact information of the person who uploaded the file in the public upload section below.